I went from $40,000 in debt to $60,000 in the bank in under eight months simply because I had changed my idea of myself from somebody who doesn't have enough to somebody who feels so grateful and lucky for everything that they do have. My name is Joe Hudson. I'm a former venture capitalist, and now I'm a coach to some of the most famous names in Silicon Valley. In this video, I wanna talk about the three things that I find get in the way most often with people becoming wealthy. The first one is their beliefs around money. The second one is that what they're doing for money is not in alignment with who they are. And the third one is that they define themselves as someone who does not have enough. And they're defining themselves that way every minute of every day. Let's say, for instance, you believe that money is bad. Maybe you believe that money is bad because your dad abandoned you to make money or because your mom thought money was more important than your education. Maybe there's a thousand reasons that you think that money is bad. Well, if you think money is bad, you're probably not gonna wanna have it in your life, so you're probably not gonna make it. Or let's say that you think that money will save you, that once you have money, everything will be fine, everybody will love you, and boy, oh boy, now I really need money. Well, you're saying that you need money, and if you really need somebody, if you're needy, do you notice they kind of run away from you? It's the same with money. If you feel really, really needy around money, you don't have the energy that brings it near you. The people who have money don't want to spend it on you. The people with the money don't want to give it to you because it's needy and nobody really feeds neediness like that in a way that's productive. So every one of your beliefs around money is something to be investigated. For example, I remember this time when I was first being a venture capitalist and I read about this person that I knew of that had this really successful exit and they had taken this big risk and they only had like put in a half a million, a million dollars and boom, they were a billionaire. And I felt this punch to my stomach, just like kush. And I was like, oh, what, what the heck is that feeling? And instead of labeling it around money, I just felt the sensation and I, and I went to the first time that I felt it and I was like, oh, that's me not being able to get my dad's love. That's all that is. And it's just, instead of not being able to get my dad's love, it turned into not to be able to get money. And it was this idea that I had that money couldn't be gotten, that it was hard to get, like my dad's love. And it was just an idea. And when I saw it and I felt it, that idea just fell away and my material world completely changed in very short order. So really investigating, writing down every one of your beliefs around money. And we have a great way to do this in view.life slash experiments. You can write down every one of your beliefs around money and start seeing how each one of them isn't true. So the second thing that keeps you poor is that what you're doing for money is not in alignment with who you are. All right, so if you are doing something for money and it doesn't feel good to you, then you are being oppressed by money and you don't want more oppression. It's just as simple as that. If you're constantly trying to do something and feel like you will have to do it because that's what you have to do to get money, then money is just a source of oppression. And so you need that alignment. You need money to be an expression of what you care about in the world. I could not make money doing anything besides something that was of service to other people because it's not an expression of who I am. And so maybe it'll last for a short period of time, but eventually it's gonna fall apart. I need something that allows me to have an expression of who I am. So the way I think about money is it's like paint. It's an art form that I get to use to make an expression of something that's important to me in the world. So it's no longer something that oppresses me, it's something that empowers me. And so having it is great because I feel more and more empowered rather than if I have it and it oppresses me, I'm more and more oppressed. And you think that might sound strange, especially if you're one of those folks who are like, oh, I want money and then I'll, everything will be okay. But there are a ton of billionaires, a ton of very wealthy people who feel completely oppressed by their money. They feel oppressed because everybody wants them for their money. They feel oppressed because people are trying to steal from them for their money. They feel oppressed because they can't lose their money because if they lose their money, they don't know how they're gonna live. They feel oppressed because they inherited the money and they can't make it themselves. All of this is forms of oppression that you can have just by having the money. So if you feel that, that money's gonna start going away, which is why oftentimes in second and third generation wealth, the money just goes away is because it feels like an oppression rather than an empowerment. The third is that you have defined yourself as somebody who doesn't have enough. So you're walking around and you're thinking, I don't have enough 
sneakers, I don't have enough money, I don't have an, a good enough car. They're all real problems, but you're defining yourself as the person who doesn't have enough. Now I've gotten to work with a lot of folks who have gone from very little money to billions of dollars. And the one thing that they all had in common is they didn't think that I didn't have enough. They thought I'm the person who's gonna make a billion dollars. That's how they define themselves. They define themselves as the person who could do it, not as the person who didn't have enough of it. And a great solution to this is just have gratitude for what you do have. And once you start having gratitude of what you do have, and you do have a lot, you have food on the table, you have people who love you, you have a car to drive, or you have public transportation, or you have Medicare, you have a lot of resources, more resources probably than a majority of people who lived 100 years ago. That's how many resources you have. And so you can be grateful for them. And it's not just a gratitude of like, oh, I'm grateful for it, but it's feeling that gratitude. And as you do, as you feel it, you start defining yourself as somebody who has a lot. And then you look around the world like you have a lot. And then you see opportunities that you didn't otherwise see. And then you act as if you have a lot and so you don't have that need that, that scares people off. Or you see that you have a lot and so other people want to be around you. They want to give you a job. They want to give you an opportunity because people want to be around folks who feel like content, feel like they have a lot. In fact, in my life, one of the most powerful things that I ever did was have a gratitude session with my wife every day about all the physical material stuff that we had. And as we did that day after day, feeling it, really allowing it into our systems, we watched our financial situation change tremendously and very quickly. I went from $40,000 in debt, which I was accumulating because I was just sitting in a room meditating, which was great, I'm so glad I did it, but I had gotten a tremendous amount of debt doing that, to being like $60,000 in the bank in under eight months, simply because I had changed my idea of myself from somebody who doesn't have enough to somebody who feels so grateful and lucky for everything that they do have. And so what's really important here is not thinking about like, oh, how do I get rich? And watching all the videos about how I get rich, which are really videos about somebody selling you something so that they can be rich. Instead of doing that, start thinking about, oh, what keeps me poor? How am I thinking like a poor person? How am I feeling like a poor person? And really take those things apart because not only are those things keeping you from wealth, but they're also keeping you from yourself. If you're grateful, you're closer to yourself. If you see yourself empowered, you're closer to yourself. And that's what's really important. It's not just about getting money. There's a lot of people who are miserable with a lot of money. It's about knowing yourself and building your wealth that way. So if you've gotten this far in the video, you must have liked it, why don't you hit subscribe? And underneath that, you can write anything that you want us to build a video around. And you can always keep on watching the next video. Thank you.